Well, David, it only took till week 17, but we finally got some good news on the COVID front and some players that we thought might be already out on Sunday now have a potential chance to play. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade. Joined as always, my co-host, David Drogemeyer, and we've been covering this team for over five seasons as we started doing our own Facebook live show, Chargers Domination Live. Now this is our fourth season as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. What's up, guys? Welcome into the show. We have a great one for you guys today because we have finally something with COVID that we can actually smile about, right? Good news. Things changing. A little too late, right? Would have been nice to have these changes last week, obviously, but great news on the COVID front. But before we get into that, make sure to go subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel. We've, you guys have been helping us set record numbers, and we really appreciate this platform, which is a little closer to kind of how we got our start anyways but as always we still love everyone on the podcast forum as well that don't have to see our ugly mugs too and you can find us for free on all platforms wherever you get your podcast from but thank you guys again for making us your first listen as always especially after tough losses we've been really appreciative of the way you guys have responded to this one and supported us through all of this right we're going through it together but david big news on the covid front i mean yes, the chargers sir. do have some players that have been activated Right, which is obviously great news. And we also have some voicemails later on the show to let people vent because obviously a very heated game. So we'll talk about Tom Telesco on the hot seat, what this team's identity is, staying positive after a tough loss like that and much more. But sticking with this, the CDC changed their guidelines and basically said that instead of a 10-day quarantine if you test positive for COVID, really now you only need to be gone for five days, which is huge, David, because the one thing that we've seen specifically with Mike Williams, right? If you test positive later in the week, you're missing two games, which is huge, right? And for other guys like Nazir Adderley, Chris Harris Jr. this week, other unvaccinated players, you test early in the week, you're still done, right? And that obviously hasn't changed much because everyone we've seen test positive has ended up missing the next game anyways. But still, I mean, this is huge news, David. I mean, the Chargers could potentially get like all of their players back, including the guys we'll get into that tested today. Yeah, well, I mean, the big changes are that they don't, they no longer have to test negative after a certain amount of time. So the, you know, just the details from Tom Pelissero is five days since the initial positive swab. They got at least twenty four hours since their last fever. Other symptoms have to be resolved, like a cough, or they have to be improved, and they have to be cleared by the team doctor in consultation with ICS and the NFL. Um, so they're basically really trying to put the, those, that trust in the players to be able to tell their team doctors and say, hey, I'm feeling better. My cough is gone. I don't have a fever. I'm ready to go. So we, we know the heart uh, and we, we know the, the the mind and the will of some of these players. So, I mean, just given, given that uh, and knowing that they want to be on the football field and they want to help their team as much as possible, uh, couple that with these new guidelines – uh, it's looking a lot, a lot better for this game coming up on Sunday for the Chargers to get most of their very, very important pieces back for this game. Absolutely. I mean, it at least gives them a chance, right? For Mike Williams, almost at this point, it's more than possible, right? Almost likely that yeah. he comes back this week now and he was going to automatically miss that game. And I think this is great for the NFL, obviously not as good for the Chargers because they got decimated last week and had such big names on there, but Obviously, you can expect Mike Williams, Joey Bosa back, right? And Joey Bosa probably already would have come back, but you don't know. Either way, now it's less, and you have a realistic chance of going. So today, the Chargers had more guys put on the list. Long snapper Matt Overton, kicker Dustin Hopkins, Trey Pipkins, the hero, you know, from a couple of games ago, and cornerback Devontae Harris, which obviously not having your kicker is not good and Ty Long can kick. He's a punter, obviously, but we saw him with Michael Badgley injured. He can kick if he has to not having your long snapper is not great because then you're going to have to sign one because you're not keeping extra ones of those guys lying around and you can't just trot somebody out there to be like, Hey, you're our long snapper now because that is such an important position. And Matt Overton has been perfect, you know, knock on wood. Right. And right now, I mean, Tristan Vizcaino probably should be back, 
right? You would think by the game because he tested positive last week and was a vaccinated player. Right. But right now he's on the COVID list too. So the Chargers have two kickers that are on the COVID list. And at least, David, this is going to be pushing it because if it's five days from Tuesday, I mean, that's putting you at Saturday, Sunday. And obviously, if you don't have your specialist there and you don't have your kicker, I mean, that's obviously a reason to concern, especially against a team like the Broncos where they have a really good defense. You kind of need all the points you can get. Yeah, absolutely. And field position could be a key part of that. Even well. for Brandon Staley, who loves to go for it on fourth yeah. down anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, there, the likelihood of Tristan Viscano being available to come back for this game just uh, you know, based on when he was placed on the list is pretty strong. So, I mean, pretty much everyone from last week. Yeah. Right? Are we expecting everybody that got put on last week to be back this week? I, I would say, yeah, I, I would say so, especially with these new uh, CDC guidelines that the NFL has since adopted. I think there's a, a very strong chance that all of those guys are going to be back to play. But if not, it's really nice to have a guy with in Ty Long who has kicked field goals in the past, has had some success doing that. Um, so that is invaluable for them. And they also did, I, I, I don't know his name right now off the top of my head, but they did add a long snapper to uh, the Just practice squad. Just in case, you know, Matt Overton can't come back, they'll elevate him and have somebody. I mean, obviously, they were never going to go into a game and not have somebody available right. for that integral, you know, uh, performance. You know, they need to have somebody to be able to do that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's really, really good, you know, especially going into these very, very important games for the Chargers that they're going to have every opportunity to get all of their guys, at least most of their guys back to full strength going into a game they really have to have. Yeah, I mean, every game's a must win from here on out, right? And it just... Seemed debilitating because after last yeah. week, missing the dudes that you were missing specifically, I mean, the Texans were missing a bunch of players. They weren't missing a Joey Bosa level player, right? Yeah. They were missing some of the guys the Chargers John, had. Obviously, Justin Jones. Uh, Justin I mean, Jones, Michael Davis, you know, Derwin James Williams misses Austin, with injury. Eckler. but yeah. Exactly. And I mean, that's just, it was just the caliber of player weren't anywhere near each other. But hopefully getting, you know, Corey Lindsley back this week yes, is going to help a lot. Getting Joey Bosa, getting some of these guys back, especially on that front that got really battered last week is going to be huge. I mean, now you have Joe Gaziano back already. We told you guys yesterday and today you have more guys coming back. Justin Jones is activated today. Chris Hallelujah. Brown, Chase Daniel, Senio Calamente, who was put on yesterday. So we're thinking that's probably a false. Yeah, it positive. seems like a false positive to me. And Andre Roberts, right. Who has really been a breath of fresh air this year in the return game. I mean, he yes, has been, he's been the best awesome. chargers returner. I can remember like literally in, in a long, long, I mean, since what, probably Darren Sproles. Yes, uh, honestly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's the last notable guy that you can say that guy really provided a spark, provided juice. Travis I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Whatever, Dan. You can do both though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Sproles return kickoffs and punts, right? You yeah. can do both and obviously he was dangerous in all of those settings. Get the ball in his hands and like Andre Roberts they trying to even incorporate him a little bit into the offense. It hasn't always worked out. But you see his vision, right? Like you can yeah. see him seeing the. You field. see his explosion. He has that that fearlessness that you need as a returner, and that's why I think it's really good for him. You know, on those end arounds every once in a while to see if he can win the edge, and you know, see uh, see if he can use his vision to hit a hole and go. I mean, we've seen him do that multiple times uh, as a kick returner this year, and it has really provided some much needed juice to that position because what happened to Joe Reese? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that was one of my favorite guys and I really am sad that we didn't get to uh, see him really have an opportunity to go out there and showcase what we saw in college, which was a dynamic returner, a, a guy who you know won the award for the best returner in college football. We just have never seen that translate, unfortunately, but the Chargers found a diamond in the rough uh, in the return game with Andre Roberts, so it's really nice to get him back. Also, it's going to be nice to add Chris Rumpf back, the rookie, uh, you know, get him back on the edge. Um, the, the more playing time that guy gets is going to be better for him and better for the football team. Especially when you don't really know what you're going to do with the Chen and Wosu. I mean, I think yeah. right now you have to bring him back and then still kind of add to that position, and you're not Definitely. done there. But, I mean, you need to kind of know what you have in Chris Rumpf at the same time. If he's not cutting it, he can't play, right? Just yeah. because like these games are way too important. So like, well, and he helps fun. on special teams too. I mean, yeah. he's he's going to run down and get some tackles on special. He teams, also keeps so. Kenneth Murray off the field <laughs> in that the edge position, which <laughs> yeah. may be equally as important, right? I mean, Justin Jones, Joe Gaziano takes away from how many you know the spotlight off Jerry Tillery and teams being able to you know single him out. So yeah, I think that's something that obviously helps getting some guys back. Finally, seeing some reinforcements come back Thank into the you, picture. Jesus. And, like, the thing is, from here on out, though, is just 
after today, who who are we going to see added to this list? Because right, because after even today, with the new stuff, they're not yeah, even play. with the new yeah. If you at least as far as we understand it right now, right, and this thing yeah. is always evolving. It's seemingly. a fluid situation. Yeah, totally. But you think the guys today have a chance to come back, even if it's not you know, if you don't, we can't say it's like a hundred percent. But like if it's just based on symptoms, not even tests. Yeah, you have a good chance to come back if you're asymptomatic, which a lot of these players have been. But you also wonder what the effects have been to someone like Corey Lindsley, what they were for a Limbaugh Joseph, who you know maybe hasn't looked as good as before he went on the COVID list, and how those things are affecting some players. So that's the other part of this whole thing, which just makes everything so kind of hard to do, right? We don't know how Joey Bosa is dealing with it as an unvaccinated player, how much it's affecting him, how much it'll take for him to get his conditioning back, how much it's going to take from the coaching staff to see from these players to put them back on the field if they're not able to come into practice this week so a lot of moving parts still but absolutely good news right and and something that's definitely going to help the chargers down the stretch because we saw they need all hands on deck and there's no real you know way around that but we do have some voicemails and we wanted to let you guys vent this week and i think we got a good batch for you guys so coming up after this we'll talk about brandon staley tom telesco what this team's identity is, and much more. But first, I need to tell you guys about my favorite protein bar. And of course, I'm talking about Built Bar. And I mean, people on the podcast can't see my face when I'm talking about Built Bars, but I think it tells you all you need to know because Built Bars are my favorite protein bar. They're a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. It's getting the best of both worlds. It's finding something that's delicious that's also going to fit on your diet, right? You're getting something that tastes like a candy bar that's also low in sugar, low in carbs, high in fiber, high in protein, there's not much more you can ask for, except for you want to have some great flavors. And that's the other thing Bilt Bar has in spades is you're going to find a flavor that you like. You can go cookies and cream, peanut butter brownie. You can go coconut, coconut almond, cherry, cherry barcia. There's a caramel flavor at all times, right? There's limited time flavors coming out all the time. And you can get a mix box where they'll let you try all the bars and you'll find one that you like. I promise you. That's a Daniel Wade guarantee right there. I can't promise you the charge will be in the playoffs, but I promise you if you try the Bilt Bars, you're going to find one that you like. And the only thing better than finding something you like is saving money on something you like. And you can do that with Built Bar. Get the best protein bar on the planet, the official protein bar of NASCAR, the official protein bar of the U.S. men's track and field team, and the official protein bar of the Locked on Chargers podcast. You can go to Built.com and get 15% off when you use the promo code LOCKED15. That's promo code LOCKED15, all caps, one word, for 15% off at Built.com. All right, David, well, it's time to get into some voicemails. And if you guys haven't already, make sure to call in and get your thoughts and questions on the show. I feel like we have some OGs that call in over and over again. We all have having first-time callers. And I think we have one today, but I don't know what the name of the person is. So we'll get into that later. But I appreciate everyone who does call in. And we're trying to incorporate this the best we can for everyone who does get played on today's show. Yes, I did have to cut your you know, voicemail down a little bit because they are being strict about how long we can do these voicemails with YouTube and everything, but I love getting your guys' perspective on things because it does bring a different aspect to the show. So the number is 323-524-7924 if you guys are trying to get your voicemail on the show. But let's start here with Joe from Jersey. Two Jersey callers today. Let's hear what he asked for us. Guys, Joe from Jersey, give me a call after that awful Houston game. Really down on this uh, Chargers defense. I thought when Brendan Staley came in, he would be the guru of a really really good defense and given the fact that we have Derwin James and Joey Bosa up and comers like Asante Samuel Drew Tankle, Kaiser White some pieces there Adderley is coming on I love Brendan Staley given the fact that he was supposed to be a defensive genius we've underachieved Kenneth Murray Tillery although he's had a couple sacks underachieving I believe what are your thoughts on this this defense I don't feel has been really good all year uh, with the exception of a few games maybe against the Raiders and such thanks guys go Bulls I mean, Joe, it's definitely hard to find the standout Chargers defensive performances because, I mean, against the Giants, right, like, they throttled them for most of the game. Like, that was a good defensive performance for most of it. But there were still too many starters out there at the end. Still gave up some points that obviously don't look great. But it's been a bad defense pretty much all year. I mean, they've given up 20 points for as long as I can remember at this point. It's like over 10 weeks at this point they've given up at least 20 points. And you saw how bad it is without those other big guys there, David, and is. The one thing I was thinking about is just something I've thought about before is like how many of the Chargers defenders do we know to be really good, right? And that's the thing is like, I'm not here to bash players. We never are going to be that podcast. Like, hey, do we want to hold people accountable? Of course. We're going to, you know, call how it is for sure. 
Mm-hmm. But you want to make sure you have all the information, too. If you're calling out somebody for a blown coverage or something, you better make sure you know what that coverage was, which is almost impossible right. to know the exact responsibilities for any given play. But we know Derwin James is good, right? Really good. Clearly. We know Joey Bosa is really good. Absolutely. Who are who else are we throwing in that list? I'm willing to say right now that Kazir White is good. Yeah. For sure. And I feel solid I'd about even, that. I'd even throw Drew Tranquil in that in that situation as well when healthy i think he's pretty damn good too and i think that's fair but i also think like still seen not too much right less than two seasons yeah and he's had some up and down games in there as well like i mean i think he's definitely maybe a little above average but like the charge defense looked slow last week too is another thing oh yeah i think asante sure. samuel jr has been good right and it's still yeah. very early in his career michael davis has just been okay this mm-hmm. year right Besides that, though, I mean, there's not a lot you can say. I mean, Justin Jones is good at certain things. Limbaugh Joseph has had some good games. Jerry Tillery has obvious flaws. Kenneth Murray, as he talked about, has obvious flaws. Like, these are all things that we can say for sure just because we're seeing them out there struggling. So as much as I think Brandon Staley obviously takes a lot of heat for this, I do think it is a lot of a personnel thing. We'll talk about Tom Delesco being on the hot seat, but – I do think it. I, you have to wonder, you know, how many good players you think are out there. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it many times how the Chargers are top heavy and and how how they really. Right, and those are all guys that are starters that we were talking about, right? We're not even talking yeah. about the depth, like, right? And and I think we've we've talked about that as well many times how the depth has been the real issue. It's been a deficiency for a long time, and that's why it's spilled over into the special teams unit because they haven't really invested in that, and they really need to in- improve their team speed. Obviously, I think everyone at this point knows the Chargers are going to have an outlandish amount of cap space this offseason, so they're really going to be able to do almost whatever they want with any player that's going to be available. They're going to have probably the top probably one or two amount of cap space uh, in the NFL this off season. So it's like $70 uh, million. Dollars. Yeah. It's 70 like plus million. million. It's absolutely unreal. So Brandon Staley and whoever the GM is be is going to be, if that's Tom Telesco or somebody else, they're really going to be able to make, you know, really make this in, in, you know, the image that Brandon Staley wants it to look like. I mean, I think he did, like I said, I think he did a good job of grabbing some players in the draft and in free agency to try to really start that foundation Sure. But he still needs to continue to add more pieces that are going to really fit and excel in his scheme. When you can't start building the foundation in year nine, right? right and I think yeah. that's the thing is like he's had a lot of time. And like Brandon Staley, we've only seen him with one group of players for the most part and a lot of mismatch pieces and a lot of guys who have been in and out of the lineup. So I think he definitely deserves the benefit of the doubt so far, you know. But let's oh, see yeah. what Bob has to say from Jersey because he had an interesting take on Brandon Staley as well. What's up? It's Bob from New Jersey. Obviously, terrible loss. My issue really is with Staley. Uh, you know, he says this game's on him. Well, if this game's on him, then he's a pretty bad head coach. My concern is we're looking at a Bill Belichick situation with Cleveland. You know, this guy could be a good head coach. I don't know yet. I don't think anybody knows. And I'm afraid that he's going to perform poorly with the Chargers and wind up being a great head coach somewhere else. I'm not saying I want to get rid of him right away, but I think he does need to look at himself in the mirror and look at how he coaches. I mean, does he ever chew these guys out? He seems like always optimistic, is always positive. Maybe that's the way to go, but it doesn't seem to be working here. I think he needs to start chewing some guys out. I think he starts to need to make guys accountable. And I think he needs to look at himself in the mirror and and, and evaluate himself as a head coach. I mean, it's always hard to say, you know, what the philosophy is the right philosophy. Like just having a hard-ass coach doesn't make you a better team. Like, that doesn't make your players play better necessarily. Like, I think one thing Brand Staley has is the respect of his team, right? And I think that you've seen that in spades with his players. I think you've seen players in the position to make plays and maybe, maybe not they haven't stepped up, right? And that's also been a part of it as well. But, like, are you afraid that Anthony Lynn is going to become the next Bill Belichick, right? Are you afraid that Mike McCoy at this point is going to be the next Bill Belichick? I don't even think he's in the league anymore, right? Like, At least you're talking about Brandon Staley in the same breath of the possibility of becoming a Bill Belichick, and that's the type of young Which is obviously coach. way too soon, too, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We don't know that, but, I mean, he, I think he has the makings of, the, of a young coach that you know has what it takes and has the intelligence – and has the people skills, has the communication skills to get it done and to be a great a great coach in this league. But 
this is his first year. I, I mean, l- let's not forget that. I mean, this is the first time he has been a head coach in the NFL. That cannot be lost on you. You have to keep that in the forefront of your mind. And also, how does anybody know how he is communicating to his players behind closed doors? You don't know what they're doing. You don't know who's getting cussed out or 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 the way he is talking to them uh, in any given situation. They're not going to show that. No one in the organization is going to broadcast that. And from any any and every single uh, you know hard knocks that we've seen out there, these coaches are going to get colorful. I mean, whether we see it or not, that's just a part of the NFL landscape and the NFL life. So to make that kind of uh, accusation, I think that's a little bit um, far-fetched, I would say. Well, and like, even in this game, like, I mean, he questioned their effort, right? But like, oh, yeah. I, I, it, it's impossible for me to say that this team isn't playing hard for him, right? Especially because there's been bad losses. There's also been great wins where these yeah. teams, you know, this team is believing that they can go out and compete with teams that have been better than them for a long time. So like, it works both ways. And I think also the kind of culture he's creating, I think the best case scenario is, you're creating a culture where your players respect you so much that the leaders in the locker room are now delegating and holding other players responsible, right? And maybe that yeah. takes a little bit of time. It takes some time to build that culture. But I think right now I'm as happy with the Chargers culture as I've been. And that's not everything. You still have to have the X's and O's as well. The sure. other thing is, too, is this is the first time Brandon Staley's ever been a head coach of a football team. Exactly. And he's been a defensive coordinator where he could spend all of his time with the defense get the game plans in place and do all of those things on a full-time basis. Now he's the head coach. There haven't been any noticeable huge gaffes, right? I mean, there's been some decisions I haven't cared for down the stretch, maybe some timeouts here and there. But it wasn't every single week you're questioning a decision he made or a time. And it's not anywhere near what we saw from Anthony Lynn. Like we're not seeing Justin Herbert's QB sneak on a pass protection set by the offensive line. We're not seeing that field goal unit not be able to get on the field in time for a field goal while the offense is still standing on the field. We're not hearing miscommunication in every press conference after the game and having them not tell you what's going wrong. Brandon Staley has been transparent every step of the way, and I think he is kind of going in that direction because after that last game, I do think he bared his teeth a little bit and was just kind of calling people out just saying the effort wasn't good enough, and that's with missing, you know, five out of your top seven or eight players defense and you don't really want to call out your guys like by name we've seen coaches do that many times in the past and the amount of times that that backfires uh is pretty much 95 percent of the time it's never a good look because when you start doing that uh, on on a regular basis you're going to start losing the respect of your players and the respect of your locker room yeah and i mean he pretty much did it with devonta harris i mean devonta harris got benched last week i mean at one point in the game after he got burned for the 41 yard touchdown right yeah. before half bad situational awareness and he still, you know brandon Staley sat kenneth murray in favor of drew tranquil like he hasn't given the guys like Braden fehoko enough snaps right and taking jerry tillery off the field enough so it hasn't right. been perfect but at least you're seeing something there right and i think that has to be a positive for the chargers and for brandon Staley. and i think Let's give this dude some time because, like, yeah. he could be a special coach. And you're right. I mean, Bob, you don't want to let him get away because you don't know what he's going to turn into. But I think everything right now is so prisoner of the moment. I think we all need to take a step back and give this dude a chance, right? And, yeah. you know, maybe he's a better defense coordinator than he is a head coach. The one thing we do know is we don't know that right now, right? And yeah. I love the way he's handled this team as a head coach and how the players respect him, how he respects his player, and, you know, putting – the game in the hands of his players, whether or not they're stepping up to those occasions, you know, stepping up to the plate and hitting home runs in those situations. That's another story, but we do have some more voicemails to get into. So I do want to get into those talking about the chargers identity and staying positive, right. In the tough part of the season right now after this. All right. So if you guys want to get your voicemails on the show, once again, the number is three, two, three, five, two, four, seven, nine, two, four. And we try to get every charge voicemail played on the show. And we appreciate you guys calling in for stuff like this and getting your opinions on here and letting us talk about it. Cause there is a lot to get into. So we're going to get into Tom Telesco being on the hot seat and everything else. But I do want to start with a little bit of an identity crisis here. Let's hear what we got. My biggest concern is 15 weeks in, I still have no clue what this thing is about. What is our identity? Can you guys enlighten me a little bit on that? Great question. I mean, I don't know if this team has an identity. I mean, I think the closest thing they are, like kind of like I talked about, is just like being that aggressive team. But you got to stay consistent with it because we saw some lapses in that last week. I mean, I think you saw a Minnesota game. You saw it last week. I think for the most part, though, you've seen a team who's, you know, 
really leaned on its quarterback and its offense, which has really had to this year, but a team that's going to lean on being aggressive and, you know, putting the ball in the hands of their players in important situations. I would agree with that. And also I, I, I kind of liken the chargers a little bit this year to a chameleon. You know, they're a team that tries to conform or really ad, uh, adapt to the opponent that they're playing week to week. And that's why I think we haven't really seen a lot of the consistency that we're all searching out for and we're all looking for. But I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to really match up as well as they can and have those unique game plans for each team that they're playing each week. Yeah, and I just don't know if it's showing up right on either yeah. side of the ball consistently enough because though I get what you're saying here as far as like, they're not the team that's going to just out physical you, right? You, you right. know, there's some teams out there. That's their identity. They're not even really the bombs away team because we don't see them commit to, you know, those deep passes enough. They're not always the quick passing game team, even though if you were to pick something, that would probably be what it's closest to, yeah. at least offensively. But I think they're still figuring it out. And I think once you see the personnel on this team start to fit the schemes a little bit better, maybe then you see, you know, a little bit more of what this team's identity is. But speaking of which, Somebody's going to have to put those pieces in place. Will it be Tom, Tom Telesco or is Tom Telesco on the hot seat? Um, fellas, I'm from Victorville here. <clears throat> have a day to uh, kind of mull over what happened, what's going on. Some more COVID uh, list players. What do you guys think Tom Telesco is going to be on that hot seat? Because it wasn't for Staley and we had a bad season. I'm pretty sure, I mean, Tom Telesco would be on that hot seat because all these losses, everything that's popping up, I think is just lack of depth. And uh, there's been a lot of people talking about it a couple of years now, you know, that they're not addressed positions. You know, even if not a starting guy, we need to get those uh, backup solidified and good players back there. What do you guys think about Telesco's chances moving forward if we don't pull out playoffs this year? All right. Well, I mean, anyone that wants to know how I feel about Tom Twess, can go to the L.A. Football Network and, and look at the four pieces I wrote on it before the season. Entering his ninth season, right? That's what called I thought a plug, about. people. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it, you can find my full thoughts there. I mean, I'm not oh, yeah. going to get nine thousand words into this thirty minute plus ish podcast. It's a great article too. Definitely go read it. Yeah, it's four. I mean, because that's how much it took to kind of break down all eight of his draft classes going into this season, mm-hmm. right? And because that's really the only players we've seen play a full season in some cases. And I think the biggest yeah. thing with Tom Telesco is just not having those depth pieces, not getting right. enough out of, you know, the guys you need to find backups and reliable pieces or find average players or find diamonds in the rough. We saw some of that, right? I mean, we felt that way. I mean, Kazir White, I think, is looking like that right now. And that's obviously come with this. Austin Eckler is definitely one of those diamonds in the rough, obviously. Undrafted player, yeah. But we're talking about draft picks and what you're using that capital on and how your, you know, free agents are panning out. And, I mean, no matter where you look, you're going to find some faults. And I think Tom Telesco had a pretty good offseason this year, right? I yeah, think you still year. win, and yeah, for sure. And and this is year nine, right? This isn't when you're supposed to be building the foundation. Like the exactly. foundation should be built, and you should be adding onto it. The other thing about Tom Telesco is we've seen him fail another really good quarterback in Philip Rivers. I mean, think what you want about Philip Rivers. They never had to look for a quarterback in Tom Telesco's era, except yeah. for when they drafted Justin Herbert. There was right. no gap. It was one year Philip Rivers, one game of Tyrod Taylor, and then straight now to Justin, Justin Herbert. Herbert. Yeah, right. So like. You've had the priorities very set straight for you, and you've made some great picks. Don't forget, Joey Bosa, obviously, Derwin James, Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, you know, then you're starting to blur the lines, obviously. You have Keenan Allen, though, right? And you have some, uh, you know, yes. other first-round picks that have worked out. Melvin Gordon, eh, Jerry Tillery, Kenneth Murray. I mean, but you've also had the Rashawn Slaters and the rest of yeah. those guys as well. The problem is, is like, you don't know what you have in each end and who to, right? And and that's the second round pick, not necessarily turning into a for sure guy that you have to bring back because he's played so well. So like the Tom Telesco hot seat is here. I just don't necessarily think that the Chargers are going to act on it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to act on it either. Just because even if they make the play or if they miss the playoffs, like Ivan was talking about, right? If they miss the playoffs this year. Yeah, if they miss the playoffs this year, I still think that they're going to give both of these guys more time. I mean, just with a new, a new coach and with the uh, amount of assets they're going to have. Well, and Brandon well. Staley, for sure. I mean, no yeah, chance. Yeah, Brandon Staley's yeah. not going anywhere. I mean, don't even. But, like, the thing is, though, is, like, that. are they linked? You know what I mean? Like, is Tom Telesco going to get I don't think they should four be linked. years? Oh, I don't think they should yeah, be. I don't it's think just a question of if they are. Yeah, yeah. The, obviously, the, that's something we don't know, but. One thing we do know is that Tom Telesco, until pretty much this year, has built from the outside in. There's been no focus on 
really investing premium talent on the interior of their offensive line nor their defensive line and the attempts that they have made on at, at addressing those situations have never panned out and, right. or their examples of those guys that have succeeded are few and far between so that's one thing that I think with Brandon Staley coming in saying hey I need you to really strengthen the middle of our team the spine of our team to where we can really have some guys that can take us into the future. So that's what I would look to see in the off season, just more additions to those key areas, the, the defensive line, the offensive line, adding more corners, adding more in the trenches rushers, yeah. and really investing more in those trenches. You got to do it every single year. And I think what we've seen specifically on the defensive line is just too many try you know, free agent band-aids, the brand and me beans, Linval Joseph's, thinking that's going to solve all your problems and that's not an indictment on each player individually. It's just like, no. it's going to take more than getting an aging veteran to fix the problem. Right. right. And the guys you have right there right now, I mean, the Braden Fehoko, obviously undrafted free agent, Joe Gaziano undrafted free agent. And, and then, you know, Jerry Tillery who hasn't panned out as a first round pick, Justin Jones, who I think is just now finally coming into his own. Yeah. Right. That's just not, not a ton. And like you needed to put more resources there instead you got a Josh Kelly in the fourth round. You took right. a Larry Roundtree in the sixth round, right? Like some of the other picks, the Joe Reed's in the fifth round, the KJ Hill's in the seventh round, guys that aren't doing anything for you. And the list goes on and on, right? I mean, the, the offensive linemen that they've taken in the middle rounds, that's why you're so afraid about Brendan Hymas because you've seen the Chris Watts, you've seen the Donovan Clarks, you've seen all the other guys that have failed to pan out and the Ryan Carruthers in the defensive side of things as well. Like you yeah. need to put serious assets in those. And if you keep trying to, turn six round picks into something that, you know, is going to help the team. And you need to count on at that point. You better hope you're hitting on some of them because the batting average has been pretty low. And I know yeah. there's some Tom Telesco truthers out there, but my thoughts are pretty clear. And I think you're seeing the lack of depth of this team. And I think it's been a problem for his entire tenure. He got the benefit of the doubt early on when he first started inheriting AJ Smith's team, which won a lot of games. Well, well just like the chargers, just, just like the chargers team this year, the, the wins for Tom Telesco have been mostly top-heavy wins. You know, mm -hmm. your, your, your first-round picks, I think a lot of those picks have looked fairly good. But when you look at the other rounds and the success rate throughout his, you know, nearly decade as the Chargers general manager, not nearly as, as high of a winning percentage as those first-round picks. Yeah, and I mean, it's just not enough hitting on those mid-round guys. Like, I mean, yeah. Justin Jackson looks good, but obviously he's been super hurt, right? Yeah. Alohi Gilman, oh, yeah. It, it's hard to say he's good at this point. Nazir Adderley, it's hard to say that he's good consistently enough to be called a good player at this point, and you're just not getting the contributions out of this other guys. But we did a lot of venting. I do want to end things here on a positive note. So let's get Curtis Loki on here and see what he has to say. Hey, Curtis Loki, I'm calling a day after that game. Yeah, it, you know what, man? It was a bummer, obviously. Like, I, I needed a day to call in because it obviously hurt so bad. I'm looking at Twitter and obviously all the Charge fans reacting. Hey, man, it is what it is. Any given Sunday, obviously, David, I know you went to the game. And, man, I just felt for you, you know, obviously the whole time. But, hey, man, it, it's a bummer. We get into the playoffs. We do. We don't. We don't. One thing we know going forward the future is still bright. I don't think we should get down on Staley. I, I, you know, I, obviously our depth is certainly questionable. I think everyone is aware of that. People that will be there in terms of personnel, hopefully just Staley and uh, Tom Plus is gone. I love the show. Again, let's keep our heads up and enjoy the rest of the season. Go Bulls. I like it and all that positivity he slips in there and Tom Plus goes gone. You know. And he also <laughs> talked about us, you know, talking about the, the I had to cut out the – you know, the Chargers, us saying the Chargers were going to blow out the Texans last week. Things changed very quickly last week. And I already said, you know, I was very wrong about how much that defense was going to be affected and how bad it was going to look out there against a bad offense. Yeah. Let's be clear. But I do think, David, I mean, for as much as we've been bashing everything, you know, everyone's been bashing everything and as toxic as Chargers Twitter has been like, mm -hmm. I do feel a positive sense, you know, for this team's future. Like, I do feel like the future is bright. I do feel like things are changing, yeah. right? Is Tom Tulesco going to be the trigger man to put the thing together, build Brandon Saley's vision? Yeah, I don't know, we'll but, like, I'm willing to go down that road. Like, I'm willing to see where Brandon Saley will take this thing, and that hasn't changed. Right, and it's because I think the first year that we've seen that team together with Tom Telesco and Brandon Staley, 
I think I've I've liked a lot of the additions and a lot of the draft picks that he's brought into the fold. I mean, how do you not love Corey Lindsley? That that signing is looking better and better every single day. The dude Matt is, is absolutely the truth. Yeah, Matt Filer, Odeabushi, before he got hurt, was playing yeah. really, really good football. I mean, some of his draft picks have come in and, and provided some meaningful snaps right away. So I, I, and you feel first, like Brandon Staley had a part of those draft picks too, and that's what yeah, makes exactly. you feel good about. It. Like it seems like Brandon Staley has kind of changed the way Tom Tuesco is drafted, and you yeah. feel I think really good about Slater, Samuel, Josh yeah. Palmer's look really good. Yep. The rest of the guys, you've at least seen some flashes. Exactly, and I think that's what I'm saying is the first year of this team together has really I think provided some positive thoughts and visions for what this team could possibly do together in the next few years because their window right now is right now. Justin Herbert's on the rookie contract. They have an absolutely amazing amount of cap space and they have a boatload of draft picks to load up on. So this is the time, the time, right? Like you really, the chargers really, really have to hit this off season. Like this is one of the most important off seasons in the last decade for the chargers because they have a lot of pieces that are in place And if they're able to improve upon that depth, this is an absolute Super Bowl contending organization very, very quickly. Yeah, and I mean, at least it seems like it's on that trajectory for me. And I think that, I mean, especially losing as many starters and the Chargers weren't going to go out there and be able to break the bank on some of the guys that left, like a Rayshon Jenkins, like a Hunter Henry, right? But you also lose a Denzel Perryman, a Casey Hayward, right? You move on from a Melvin Ingram. Like, that's a lot of pieces, mainstay guys that they've had to replace here. So, I'm willing to give Brandon Staley the benefit of the doubt. And I haven't always felt like this. Like, I didn't think the team was going in the right direction under Anthony Wynn. I didn't think the team was going in the right direction in Mike McCoy. And maybe I'll get jaded if Brandon Staley continues to not improve on this year, right? But I do think this team is still a little ahead of schedule in the first year of a new head coach and the second year of a young superstar quarterback, first year of an offensive coordinator, an entirely new coaching staff, an entirely new training team and all of that stuff. Like, give him time to build it. And I – and For once, like, I feel excited to see that happen. Like, I was questioning Anthony Lynn after the first season. I was questioning Mike McCoy after the first season. And Anthony Lynn held the locker room together, right? And that's why I don't think the hard-ass mentality is something that's just going to change this team. I like where this team is headed. I like the pieces they got this year. I like the thought of a full offseason, right? Maybe less COVID restrictions, more time for Rand Staley and the rest of his coaching staff to get in what they want to do and be able to really implement the way they want to play and build the roster in Brandon Staley's image and get the guys that he needs to be successful because he's on his third head coach. Tom Telesco is right. So if it's not working with the third guy, you're either terrible at picking head coaches or you're just not putting the right team together. And I think that's a chicken and egg situation that I don't know if he's getting the entire length of Brandon Staley's contract to figure out, but that's going to wrap things up for today's show. Make sure you guys are back here tomorrow because it is crossover Thursday. I'm excited to be joining the locked on Broncos and Sarah Benninger and Cody Rourke, as always, two of the best. One of my favorite AFC West hosts. You know, I guess there's only three other ones. So he has to be one of the best. But they always know what they're talking about. I'm excited to get into that with them. If you guys make sure you don't miss it, you can go to make sure you don't miss it. Go subscribe to the new Locked On Chargers YouTube channel. Follow the show for free on all platforms, wherever you get your podcasts from. And you can find the show on all of our social media. You can find me at, on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports. Dave Jogmeyer on Twitter at Joe Talk SD. And the show is sort of at Locked On LAC. But make sure you guys get on the next voicemail show. Once again, the number is 323-524-7924. But make sure you're back here with us tomorrow for Crossover Thursday. Until then, take it easy and go Bolts.